I'm just going to turn down my media notifications. I'm starting to get this figured out so it's not, so my phone isn't ding, ding, ding when I'm going live. Yep, give me about five minutes, okay, baby love? Okay. Okay, can everybody hear me? Hello, Brother Golden Eagle. Hi, Nick. Long, long day. <clears throat> So while I'm waiting for people to get on here, um, doing a lot of updates today, including what's going on with our petition for stopping illegals from getting driver's licenses to my scare with the school lockdowns today, which I have a little update on that. <coughs> Can somebody comment if they can hear me or if it sounds muffled? I feel like I look blurry. Something's wrong with my camera. I did have a good day, Jim. A long day, but it was a good day. A learning experience for sure. You hear me? Okay. So many notes. Oh my gosh. Okay, so just to let y'all know, um, I decided to take a trip over to the coast in my district um, in Newport. They were holding a town hall public commenting um, get together basically between um, Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife and the Oregon Crabber and Fishermen Association. Um, basically for about three and a half hours, I sat there and listened in on this meeting and just to kind of give you an idea of the gist of it in layman's terms of what's going on is the ODFW wants to basically stomp out another vital business to Oregonians for their crazy agenda. It's all about creating positions for their friends. Um, hi, Dale. I have to give a shout out to Dale. This man, this patriot, you all know Dale Hummel. Um, for those of you that don't, whenever you're at a rally or anything important going on in Oregon, Look around, and when you see someone videotaping, nine times out of ten, it's going to be Dale. Um, I gave him short notice yesterday that I was planning on going to the coast, and if he would be able to come and help um, capture what was going on for the people. Um, and he showed up, and he was there since 9.30 this morning. I was actually supposed to be there at 11 to hear all the legalities of what's going on, but I had that school scare with my children's school being on lockdown today, which I found out um, had to do with a student who was threatening to shoot up the school. Um, he relayed that to a teacher in a text message, which the news is not telling you that. Um, and there was witnesses of a student in the parking lot with a metal baseball bat and what seemed to be a short rifle. So needless to say, my children will not be going to school tomorrow either. And I will be going down to the school and having a conversation with principals and anybody else who will listen to me because I'm at the point right now that until they start taking this seriously and seriously taking our children's safety. My kids aren't coming back. They can threaten me with jail. They can whatever. I will homeschool them. I don't know how yet. I am a single mom. But, you know, I would rather do that than attend my children's funeral. 
So, uh, that's a whole other subject. <clears throat> so basically this is, um, what's going on on the coast to get back on subject. <laughs> it's been a long day, so I'm probably going to be over here, over there, off the wall. No, I'm not drunk. Um, as I get accused of when I do these videos, I'm just exhausted because I'm a patriot with boots on the ground and I'm hitting the street. So, uh. Anyways, so basically this is just a different version of the whole spotted owl thing, but with the whales. Um, they are using fear tactics and trying to force legislation and more fees and crippling our crabbing and fishing industry along the coast, which is very, very vital um, all at the fear mongering of whales getting entrapped into these <clears throat> crabbing nets, um, the lines that drop down. And as you all know, I don't claim to know everything about anything. And I don't know a thing about the crabbing and fishing industry, but I do know state legislature and I do know the way that state agencies behave and their tactics and that's why I wanted to be there to sit in and listen and the one common denominator that I realized was I'm just going to switch to my little notes here <coughs> hmm. I still have that ocean air so basically they used a lot of the wording like maybe, um, probably, I imagine that, uh, I think, um, we think maybe, we hope. The one common denominator out of all of that is they don't know. They have no clue about these policies that they are trying to implement and these crippling tactics that they want to implement on our coastal society. Um, I sat there and I looked around the room and, you know, I hate to put labels on things, but you can see, you know, the little hoity toities, a few of them over in a corner. And then there was an entire room full of your blue collar crabmen, fishermen, their wives, and they, y'all have no idea. These people, just as the same with the timber industry, they know what they are talking about. And they were so articulate and knowledgeable and open to ideas that will help, even though they were calling it out left and right. You know, this whole fear mongering, it's six whales. Six whales have been entangled in these crab nets since 2003, 2011. I can't remember. Um, I didn't get a chance to write that down. But the, the point is, is six, okay? And two of them were illegal netting. So, um, and the other thing is none of them were during season. It was off season. Um, for those of you that don't really understand, like me, for instance, if you are a crabber or fisherman and you have your line dropped down and you've got like 40 crab pots onto that line, they want to basically cut that as much as they can and take it from like 40 to allowing them to have five, which you don't have to be a crabber or fisherman to figure out that that's just ridiculous. That's ridiculous. It makes no sense. That hurts the little guy, the little boats. They're going to have to come inland more times and the travel time and the gas, you know, for the boats. You know, they claim they care about the environment. It's insane. So... They even admitted themselves that there's only a 50% success rate with these things that they're trying to implement. That means there's a 50% failed rate. And again, I'll loop it back around to we think, maybe, we hope, we don't know. 
we imagine um, they want $100,000 to do a study. They want money to come from these hardworking blue collar fishermen to pay for one position, one position at the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife to be um, doing the intake for all these new tags. Um, there was a question asked by a gentleman there wanting to know what the stock assessments data was. And me and many people in that audience seen how the gentleman that was responding got very nervous. His breathing got heavier. He had no answer. Um, he was dancing around the answer. So I raised my hand and reiterated to go off of his question. I said, who is conducting these stock assessments? And where's the results? Where's the data? Do you have that data available here today? And the answer was no, we don't have that data available here today. And I said, okay, well then is it public knowledge on the data? Where can they find the data? Again, they dance around the question. Um, it was a whole bunch of they don't know, you know? Um, I'm not a fisherman by any means, like I said. Um, however, I have worked in state legislature and I've seen and continue to see the gross misspending and mismanagement of funds into all of these risk assessments and putting together research teams. And my concern is the fact that a state agency, again, wants to push the people out of the loop who know the business. It's no different than what we've seen with the timber industry. You know, they want to come in and say that they know what's best. These pencil pushers behind a desk that are not putting their lives on the line, that are not supporting their families, um, and that are not bringing economic stimulation to the economy. They're only bringing economic stimulation, like I said, to themselves and their friends and these ridiculous positions and the ridiculous salaries that our tax money pays for, for these positions that don't do anything and that they don't even know are necessary. We the people have got to come together and I really encouraged a lot of them. I spoke with the president and the vice president of the Crabber, Oregon Crabbing and Fishermen Association and I let them know about Timber Unity and actually there was a, a representative of Timber Unity there and I knew I was in good hands because as soon as I got there I saw his shirt and I like ran right up to him and I was like, hey, and we were like brother and sister from there. And we sat together, he was filling me in on things and I was telling him, okay, this is their loophole. And we were working, you know, we were a fierce team there today. And, you know, the state has already proven that they don't know how to manage anything, okay? And pushing the professionals, whether you're in the logging or timber industry or the fishing industry or the vaping industry, you know, they think that they know what's best and that we all need to just sit down and take it and continue to pay the fees and have no voice and just take it. Meanwhile, um, my son and I, we stopped in Depot Bay on the way home to get something to eat and the lady that I was speaking to she was so happy. She was like, so are you guys here visiting? And I said, no, I'm actually running for Oregon's 5th Congressional District. And I came to find out, you know, what other crippling agenda Kate Brown and her cronies are trying to push now on the coastal community. And she, like, was practically in tears, happy that I was there to do that. And, you know, she brought up a good point. When you're doing this impotent not impotent what's it called it's been a long day you guys i'm sorry when you're rendering these vital businesses impotent 
it's going to raise costs. You know, I had a bowl of clam chowder that's already 10 bucks and it, it wasn't even a bowl. I, it was a cup of clam chowder. You know, when these policies go into effect, that cup of clam chowder is going to be 15, 20 bucks now. You know, they, they don't care. They don't care about the blue collar people. They don't care about keeping costs down. They just care about bringing in Californians and bringing in all the rich people that can afford the $20 cup of soup. I don't know about you. I love me some clam chowder, but I'm not trying to pay $20 for a cup. And it's ridiculous. The state can't manage the safety of our children in school. The state can't manage the logging industry. And the state sure the heck obviously doesn't know what they're trying to do with the Crabbing and Fishermen Association. And I am really encouraging all of them to be down there at the Capitol on February 6th in unity with Timber Unity. Along with the vaping communities, you know, medical mothers of freedom, everybody. I want everybody to unite who is being affected and left out um you know the the family members of people who've been killed by illegal aliens drunk driving or however anybody out there who's watching this video who has suffered at the hand of the state of Oregon whether it be having your children taken unconstitutionally having your right to bear arms taken unconstitutionally um, continually being taxed to the point that you're having to sell your homes and move in with other family members just to stay above water or even, even with it or struggling to get a breath of air, you know, enough is enough. And the, the democratic majority is showing their hand in every aspect that they can. That's what they're doing right now. They are still very angry that Donald Trump is their president. They are still very angry that our Oregon 11 senators walked out. They are still very angry. They're just angry. They don't want to listen to the people that live, eat, and breathe. I was listening to people that have been in this fishing industry for 32 years that are saying, hey, you know, why don't you leave it to us? The people, you know, we're willing to make sure that every crabber and fisherman out there on the ocean takes a class, you know, and gets licensed or however you want to do it on what to do if you come across a whale that has been entangled in a crabbing net or what have you, you know, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. They they pretend like they want to hear it. And that was my ending statement. After sitting there for three and a half hours and bless my baby boy. He was so good today. Y'all would have been proud. Um, I actually think he got more out of today than he would have sitting in that classroom that I don't have any confidence in that he's safe in. Um, I basically ended with a statement saying, you know, I'm not PC. And, you know, ODF, I looked at ODFW representatives and I said, you're going to disagree with what I have to say. So I'm not speaking to you. And I turned and I addressed the crabbers and the fishermen and I let them know exactly what's going on. What it was, was a dog and pony show. And it's their little way of making them feel like they have a dog in the game, in the fight, and they don't. Um, a lot of them realized that and they were calling it out. And let me tell you, these people are very articulate, way more articulate than I am because they know it. They know it. And I don't pretend to know it. I wasn't standing up there saying, I don't know, my hope is and this and that like ODFW was. But what I do know is I know their tactics and I know their loopholes. And it so coincidentally matches up to... You know, these implementations that they, they want to do by February of 2020, conveniently around the same time that short session is and that they want to legislatively have uh, initiatives ready by 2021, which will be the next long session 
Um, that's when these people come in, the state agencies, and they say, we need that $100,000 to hire one person to take more money from this industry. And then we're going to pretend like we know what we're doing with that money. But then we're going to come back during the next short session and say, hey, guess what? We need some more money because apparently we're... <clears throat> And we didn't know what we were doing, even though the crabbers and the fishermen were calling it out. But hey, we're going to convince you because we have titles behind our name, like, you know, marine biologist and, you know, professor from a university, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't hold to water in my book compared to the gentleman that's been in this industry for 32 years who is not out there saying, screw the whales. He's saying... This is not an issue and it's definitely not that big of an issue for you to run out a very vital industry in Oregon along the coast. So I let them know I'm here and I am fighting for everybody in Oregon. Um, it was a shame. I haven't heard anything out of my opponents, but I'm not going to go there. I'm going to stay above water on that. Um, I'm here. I'm here for you guys. I see what the state is doing. It, it was my pleasure to be there. And it was a learning experience. You know, I've always kind of wondered what y'all do out there. And if anybody's watching that I met today, like I've never even been out on the ocean in a charter boat. So that's something I would be interested in maybe trying to go do and like get a real sense of what y'all go through. Um, you know, I might sound ignorant in my next statement, but I've seen those shows where they're out on the ocean and stuff. And I know that you guys are risking your lives and I know that you're not bad people. And I know that, you know, you do it for the fun. You do it because it's in your blood. It's in your family genealogy. It's the way of life. You know, I appreciate you. I don't know how many out there love seafood, but I am a seafood guru. I love it. And I'm very appreciative of everything that goes into it. You know, I, I'm grateful for the people that are out there and risking their lives to make sure that, you know, I can have crab or these hoity-toity people and their little lobster dinners. You know, maybe they need to be taken out on a charter boat and see what really goes into it. Anyways, I'm going to go off on a tangent if I keep talking. So I just want to give you all an update on that. Um, I'm exhausted, so I am going to get ready for bed. And my message again, stay vigilant. Uh, we did do an update on the Stop Illegal Drivers .com, or Stop Illegal Drivers Facebook page. Mark and I went live about how we're going to move forward. We have decided we're going to fight. Uh, we're not going to do it in court. We're going to redo the petition. Um, you can get all those details if you go over to Stop Illegal Drivers on Facebook and check our video. And I got to get some sleep because this mama bear has to go raise hell and eat cornbread in the school tomorrow and find out what their plan is to keep my baby safe or my babies are coming out. God bless you all. Hug your families. Much love and always pray for Oregon. I'm fighting for you.